Welcome back to Airman Vision. My name is McKenna Gott, and today I'm going to be talking about getting started with your Air Force journey and talking to a recruiter. Obviously, the first step to joining the Air Force is to find a recruiter. Airforce.com, you're going to click on connect, then you're going to click on find a recruiter. You'll enter your zip code and then your education level and you'll hit search and then the recruiter for your area will come up with their contact information and then you're going to give that recruiter a call I know when that line bling, and I can only mean one thing. hopefully they answer you sooner than later so the next thing that is going to happen is the recruiter is going to ask you some qualifying questions we all are going to have a lot of questions but they're going to have these qualifying questions first so save any of your questions that you have for a one-on-one -on -one appointment next i'm going to talk about what to bring to your appointment with your recruiter the documents that you'll need you are going to need your driver's license your social security card birth certificate and high school diploma that is something that everybody has to take with them if you're married you have to take your marriage certificate and your spouse's social security card if you have gone to college you're going to want to make sure and have your college transcripts with you and some additional documents that you may want to bring would be a passport if you have one any name change information if you have kids their birth certificate and social security card the day of your appointment with your recruiter Thankfully for me, in this case, I called my recruiter on a Monday and I got an appointment that next Wednesday. It is not always this easy. Thankfully, in this situation, I called and he answered on the first call and I got an appointment two days later. When you first go in, they're gonna hand you a clipboard and you are going to answer all of those qualifying questions that you were asked on the phone. You're gonna have to answer those all over again. I am at the very, very, very beginning of this process and I have already answered the same questions over and over and over again. Over and over again. So be ready for that. Now, since I have tried talking to recruiters in the past, I didn't have a whole lot of questions and also because my husband was in the Air Force, so there were a lot of things that I was already aware of. But the main question I had, how fast can I join? And this is going to differ for every single person because there's so many factors that go into it. One being if you have all of your documents with you already. Another thing is if you have any ongoing medical processes. For me, I actually have Invisalign right now. I'm not wearing my retainers, but I still have the attachments on my teeth and I have to get those removed. This is something I learned last time I tried talking to a recruiter and joining. I couldn't at the time because I have Invisalign on. So if you guys are out there with braces or Invisalign, those have to be removed before you're able to go to basic training. Next is going to depend on when you can get a MEP state and if you pass MEPS and the ASVAB are both gonna go into if you're able to move forward faster. And the recruiters get jobs all at different times. Next question I had was about the ASVAB. We all have to take the ASVAB and they have a few different versions. One is the PICAT ASVAB. This is a computerized ASVAB that you take at home. My recruiter actually doesn't like this version at all, so he isn't going to give me the option to do it. But then when you go to MEPS and do the ASVAB stuff there, if you've already taken the PICAT at home, they either make you do a validation test or they might even make you retake the whole ASVAB. So he's like, it's better just to do the one and done and have it over all at MEPS. Now the only option I have is to do the CAT ASVAB, which is the computerized version of the ASVAB that you take at MEPS. Now I know this is not the first time you've heard of MEPS because I'm sure this is not the only video you've watched, but MEPS is the Military Entrance Processing Station and it is a two-day ordeal. That's the word we're going to use. Most places, recruiting offices will have you meet at the recruiting office and then you take a shuttle to MEPS. You go to the hotel and the first day you will take the ASVAB if you haven't taken the ASVAB yet. And then the second day is the longest day. You get up at like 
four in the morning and then you're there till like 4 p.m. And that's the day where you go through all of the medical examination stuff. I will tell you guys more about the MEPS experience after I have gone through MEPS myself and then I'll let you guys know how it goes. The next thing my recruiter and I talked about was jobs. Now I want a medical job so bad. I feel like that is a common interest of many people. Maybe it's not, but for me, I really want a medical job. I've heard that it's hard to get medical jobs. So that was the first thing I said when I was asking about my jobs. I said, I want a medical job. How likely is it that I'm gonna get one? I feel like they're just always high demand, so they're hard to get. So then I asked, what are the main jobs that they're filling right now, or at least looking for the high demand jobs? And he said, cyber, intel, and security forces are the main jobs right now that they're looking for people to be interested in. Then when it comes to job selection, after MEPS, after you take the ASVAB and you pass MEPS, you'll get a list of jobs that you qualified for, and then you're gonna sit down with your recruiter after MEPS. Don't have to have it selected at MEPS. After you sit down with your recruiter and you do a one-on-one, -on -one kind of counseling session. That way you can see what you qualify for, talk about the jobs with them, see what you're interested in. And then you make a list of eight jobs and only one job is allowed to be a medical job. But other regions might have different requirements. You might have to have two aptitude areas or maybe you're allowed to have more medical jobs. But for me here in Huntsville, Alabama, eight jobs, one medical, one aptitude. After you're done getting all of your questions answered by the recruiter, you're feeling good about it, you're ready to move forward, then your recruiter might have you go ahead and take a practice ASVAB. So that is what I did. I had the computer there. It wasn't timed on the computer, but you're just supposed to time yourself. So he said to take 30 minutes and there were 40 questions, 10 in four different categories. Then the recruiter is gonna come in when you're done answering all of them and then your overall scores show up on the screen. You'll go get your recruiter and he's gonna come back in and evaluate your scores. So I got a 50 on my practice ASVAB. Once your recruiter evaluates your score, they will give you some tips and advice on things to study for. And then my recruiter let me know about fourtests.com. That way I could take my own practice ASVAB at home and uh, brush up on my skills a little bit. So hopefully I can get a better score when I go to take the real one. The last thing that you're gonna do is go over the bunch of forms. For me, it was digital forms and I would assume that for most people it is going to be. They're gonna have you create a six to eight digit pen. My recruiter told me that this is something that I'm gonna use at least throughout the whole joining process. It could be after, it could be your whole career. So make sure it's a number that you remember um, because this pin is going to act as your signature. So whenever you have to sign something, they'll say type in your pin and then your initials or your signature will pop up showing that like you validate that form. But over drug and alcohol form and then of course you, get, you gotta sign each one of these. Medical, so you go through all your medical history. This is the time as well if you do have any medical issues, it is something that you want to let your recruiter know. Then I had to sign saying that I have not taken the ASVAB yet, so for those of you who have taken it, I'm sure you'll just need to give your recruiter that paper with your score on it and the date and all of that and then you wouldn't have to sign this. Dependent information uh, for medical reasons because when you join and your spouse and kids will become your dependents so you need to fill out that stuff. And then recruiter relations saying that you can't have any personal relationships with your recruiter. And then the very last thing is they're going to send you an email for a background check and I I'm going to make a whole separate video about this because uh, there needs to be a whole separate video about it. So I will make that video for you guys to check out. My appointment took about three hours. It could differ for you, of course, but definitely take that into account um, if there's anything that you need to do that day to make time for your recruiter appointment. I was thinking it might be about an hour or so, but yeah, it took about three hours. It didn't seem like that long because I was excited to move through this process and to like hear some good news finally after waiting this long. So that is it. And if you guys have any questions, put them in the comments below. 
I will continue to make videos of uh, my journey to joining the Air Force.